attendees are in listen only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. I, Ankit, on behalf of Indian and Vadwani Foundation, would like to invite you all for this webinar and also introduce our expert, Neeraj Shah, social media expert, referral marketing expert, India, BNI Director of Business Affairs, Australasia, Middle East, and Africa. Neeraj is the India Master Franchiser of BNI, recently identified by the Wall Street Journal as a top 25 high performing franchise system in the United States. He self-published a book, The Quest of the Phoenix, A Powerful New Way to Grieve, contributing author to number one Wall Street Journal bestseller, Masters of Success. A firewalker, Neeraj is a third generation entrepreneur with business experience in commodities and plastic packaging. Before I hand over the floor to Neeraj, a quick note to all our attendees. You will all be on mute. You may ask questions by typing in the panel provided. Our expert will answer the question after his presentation. Over to you, Neeraj. Okay, great. Thank you so much uh, for having me on today. Okay, so networking. Five shocking mistakes of the worst networkers around. So before we really get into that, uh, let me ask you uh, why is networking important? And let me put this into perspective. Uh, I really believe that largest and profitable companies around or people around have understood what the trend was and have managed to position themselves in a way in which they allowed themselves to take advantage of that particular trend. Let me explain a little bit further about why networking is, is going to become one of the most important things to be able to do. Okay, So let's look at some of the trends that were there. Initially, we had the industrial age that was there, where it was all about the production line. And someone that really cracked it all was uh, Ford. And he was able to set up the first production line that were there, and he really profited from there. And you know that's where the industrial age was born. Then came next, uh, you know, came the age of technology. Uh, companies like IBM, you know, put together the computer, and uh, you know, you know, companies like Microsoft started running, uh, you know, software on the IBM uh, computers, and this is where the age of technology uh, came in. Pretty soon. Lots of uh, computers were out there. They started getting networked, and you had the net born. And suddenly, there was a huge proliferation of information, and it became important to be able to shift through that information and be able to find specifically what you were looking for. And this is how Google was able to position itself and leverage the age of information. So the question is, what is next? Well. The next age is the age of association. The age of association is going to become one of the most important ages thus far. Just to put things into perspective again, uh, when Google listed about eight years ago, it got valued at about $25 billion. About a month, over a month ago, ago um, you know, Facebook got listed and uh, it got listed at over 100 billion. Why is that? It's because Facebook and companies like Facebook, you know, I would say BNI, LinkedIn, etc., are now leveraging the age of association. Never has it been more important for you to be actually connected, you know, to people. And you know, this particular thing is uh, put forward by a leadership expert by the name of John Maxwell. He said, never before has it been more crucial to be connected to or associated with people of influence. The biggest impact to your personal and professional life will be determined by who you are associated with and your connection to them. And that's what John Maxwell said. So I just wanted to help you understand why networking is important. Both offline and online, networking is certainly here to stay and you can make the trend your friend. Now, 
let's look at the next part of this presentation. There's a lot of books written on networking out there. Our organization by itself has written over eight best-selling books and there are hundreds of other books on networking out there. I think the best way in which we can sometimes learn about something is learning from people's mistakes. So what are the top five mistakes that people end up making while trying to network? So these are the top five shocking networking mistakes that you need to avoid. Okay. So the first one being a hunter. A lot of times I go to networking events and I just see people just going from one event to another, just trying to score a deal, you know, meet a prospect and close a particular customer. And you've got to understand that networking is about cultivating relationships. It's about farming as opposed to hunting. And good networkers are there, the, the ones that really invest in relationships. So that's mistake number one that uh, people end up making. The second one is verbal diarrhea. How many times have you met someone at a networking event and all they do is talk about themselves, about how, how good their company is and uh, you know it's in line with you know, mistake number one where people are just trying to self-promote and close a deal and end up just talking about themselves constantly. You've got to understand a good networker has two ears and one mouth and uses them proportionately. It's very important that you give the other person an opportunity to talk, you know, ask some questions. That will be the easiest way in which you're able to, uh, you know, do this. So what are some good questions to ask uh, you know, people? And did you know that you know, invert, uh, introverts are some of the best networkers around because they're, they're people who listen a lot rather than extroverts who love to talk about only themselves and not hear about anyone else. So what are some good questions for you to ask? Well, the first one is an icebreaker. You know, when, when you go to a networking function where you don't know many people. You know, a good question to ask someone that you've just recently met is where have you come from? Because we'll all have come from some place or the other. Have you come from Churchgate? Have you come from Burivali, etc. It just gives you uh, a small, uh, easy way to get a conversation started because everyone's come from somewhere. Then with regard to asking more questions that would be important in the networking scenario. Ask them a little bit about, you know, uh, what type of company they have. Um, ask about the key products and services that they have. Ask about the kind of customers that they deal with. You know, if you're able to get these sorts of information, then what happens is before you talk about yourself. Find out th this about the other person, and then it gives you an opportunity to tailor your presentation to things that would be relevant to them. Is there something that you are doing in your company that is going to be able to help them? Do you have common target markets? Um, do you have similar products or services where you're able to synergize? And one of the things that you've got to understand is that there's a big paradigm shift going on at the moment. We're moving away from competition and we're moving to collaboration. Yeah, so that's one thing that you know people have got to understand. Okay, now we're through with that. Let's look at you know mistake number three. Being a Las Vegas dealer, what do I mean by that? And this is probably the most common mistake that I see happening here in India. As soon as I'll go to a networking function, I'll meet someone new automatically, it's almost without me having said anything more, they'll suddenly I'll find myself with a business card of the person. Remember we're not there trying to just sell our products and services, we're trying to find out more about the other person and also ask for permission before giving out your you know, business card. How many of you go to a networking event looking to buy things? Probably not many of you. 
And if you have someone just giving you their card, and you know, you're left with a stack of business cards at the end of the day, and you don't know what to do with them. Most of them are pretty useless. So it's no good just giving people your cards uh, any time and every time. You know, ask for permission if you would, you know, if people would like your card or not. And initially use the right questions to elicit whether this would be the right person for you to give your card to. Um, the second thing I would say with regard to this is honor the event. As you can see here, you know, uh, there's a funeral going on and someone's asking, oh, here, here's my business card. You know, obviously, you know, there's some times, some events where you can't end up, you know, giving business cards. Be aware of the situation and the context and then choose, uh, you know, to give your cards. Otherwise, you know, I see this rampant constantly. People are just giving away business cards. Um, okay. The next thing that I'd like to talk about, mistake number four, are the networkers that ignore the VCP formula. So what is VCP? It's a formula that's there in social networking and it was put together by a gentleman called Dr. Ivan Meisner. And in the VCP formula it says visibility plus credibility equals profitability. People have got to know who you are. You've got to be visible in the market. But visibility by itself is not enough. You also need to establish credibility. And what do I mean by credibility? There are two components to credibility. One part is looking at being of good character. Are you a good person to deal with? Are you a person who lives by their word, etc.? You have integrity. And then the second part is, are you competent in what you do? Are you good at delivering in terms of your business what you, you say you're good at? So you need both of those. You need character and competence. Sometimes we know people who have a great character but are not competent. Those are people that we're probably not going to do business with. And also there'll be times where we know that people are certain people that are not good character and they're good at what they do, but you know, as soon as we find someone who is of better character, we would rather switch to that supply. So it's important to have you know those two in place. You add visibility with credibility, then and only then will you get profitability. Now you know, in networking, there are differences in gender. Men network differently and women network differently. I'd just like to share a tip here. Most men try and go from visibility straight into profitability. Not possible to do that. You can't miss the C credibility part. So they think just by bragging to each other about you know the great customers that they have or the great things that they've done, suddenly they'll go straight into profitability and they can ask for an order. Um, women are very good at building relationships and getting the credibility in place. They're able to position themselves in a way where they're able to show their character and competence. But where they tend to fail is in networking situations that, you know, then they don't go for the P, the profitability, and actually ask for the business. So there's a lot that both men and women can learn from each other. And you know, if they understand how the VCP formula works, then that's another key element of networking in the right way. Okay, and then now we come to the final part, you know, the fifth mistake that people end up making, where they go, it's all about me, me, me. What do I mean by that? A lot of people, when they go out networking, they're only looking out for themselves. They're only looking to help themselves. They're never looking to help anyone else. And the currency of networking is generosity. We've built an organization currently which has 150,000 businesses across 49 countries. And we've built it on one simple philosophy, givers gain. The currency of networking is generosity. If you help others, 
you know, then they will want to help you. So when you're networking, always look to see how can you help others. Are, are people having a particular problem that your company is able to solve? Uh, do you share similar target markets and maybe there's some collaboration you're able to do and share some clients and refer each other? Is there some information that you've learned recently that helped you in your company that you think could be helpful to others? If you approach your networking efforts in this particular way, you will find that your networking efforts will pay huge dividends. So to recap, the five mistakes we want to avoid. Stop being a hunter. Remember, networking is about being a farmer as opposed to hunting. Make sure you don't have verbal diarrhea and if you have two ears and one mouth, use it proportionately. Stop being a Las Vegas dealer. Just don't give, keep giving out your uh, business cards to each and every one. Converse with them. Build a relationship. Get to know them a little bit better. Ask for permission and honor the event. Be aware of where you are. And is it appropriate to give out your card at that time? Number four, remember the VCP formula. Visibility plus credibility will give you profitability. Use that formula in the right way in your networking efforts. And it's not all about me, me, me. It's about actually helping others. So when you're building your business through word of mouth and networking, remember it's about cultivating relationships with people. It's not what you know. It's who you know that really counts. Okay? Take for example, we all know Ratan Tata. But how many of us does Ratan Tata know? Okay? If we're able to make a phone call to him and he's able to remember us and know us, then that's the kind of contact that would really count. So it's not only just the number of contacts you have, because people think, oh, you know, I have a database of you know 5,000 contacts, 5,000 Facebook friends. It's not only the numbers. You need a depth in that network as well. So how well do you know those people? And can you, you build up enough credibility with those people to be able to leverage those relationships? So as you network and look around, you know, look around at what you leave behind. Are you creating relationships? Or are you leaving many bodies in your way? So thank you very much, Neeraj, for that interesting session. Thank you to, you to all our attendees for participating in the webinar. We are glad that the questions kept coming. Do send in your feedback and suggestions to us at eclub at nnglobal.org. Also, if you found the session interesting, feel free to blog or post about it. The recorded version of the webinar will be available on our website eclub.nnonline.org by tomorrow. Our next webinar will be held on July 25th from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's a panel discussion by K. Sri Krishna, Mukund Mohan, Pallava Bandhopadhyay. The topic of discussion will be should I start a venture now or do I take up a job after graduation. We look forward to your participation. Also, NEN eClub is starting a series of workshops across India. The first workshop is on July 28th at New Delhi on the topic Pivoting Your Venture, Getting to Plan B. The format of the workshop includes group work, exercises and interaction with our guest entrepreneur to avail real-time perspectives. Register today and get early bird discount. For more information, visit our website. Thank you once again and have a nice evening.